believe I see the honorable member from Lesser Slave Lake stand. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to rise and respond to the Lieutenant Governor's speech from the throne and to deliver my time-honoured maiden speech as a member of Lesser Slave Lake. I want to start by congratulating all the members of this House on their recent election vi victories. I would like to thank my sons, Noah and Landon, along with all my sisters and brothers and the rest of my family and friends for the love and support they have given me on this journey. This legislature is truly facing an enormous challenge in getting Alberta's economy back on track, but Albertans need, to, need us to succeed, and we will. I've had the opportunity to do a lot of jobs over the years. I've been a lumber piler, handsaw tree faller, roughneck on the drilling rigs, trucker, high school teacher, a logger operating button tops, feller bunchers, delimmers, grapple skidders a sawyer and sawmiller, a tree planter, a farmer, a crane operator and owner. I feel that my present job will undoubtedly be one of the most challenging and rewarding experiences of my life. My riding is one of the greatest places to live, work and raise a family in the entire world, rich with history, industry and natural beauty. In the west of the riding you'll find High Prairie, a gateway to the peace country with some significant farmland. It's a beautiful town that attracts leisure seekers for its many wonderful offerings, including the Golden Walleye Classic Fishing Competition and the High Prairie Rodeo. As you head east on the south side of the lake, you'll pass Anilda, Jussard, Faust, Canuso, which have a great rodeo each year, Canyon Creek, and end up east at the east end of the lake, my town of Slave Lake, which hosts riverboat days and the icebreaker hockey game yearly. Traveling to the east, you come to Smith and Hondu, who hold a great fall fair and rodeo. Continue east and you'll end up in Colleen Lake. Head north to Sandy Lake, and then a place that is close to my heart, Wabasca, located west of Wab the Wabasca oil fields. As you head back west, you would pass through Red Earth Creek, continuing west, and end up at Cadot Lake. As you may know, Slave Lake fell victim to a devastating wildfire in 2011. Since then, we've rebuilt and the people are now opening their hearts and their homes to wildfire victims from across the province. I would like to commend all the firefighters, police and ambulance personnel who have worked so tirelessly on keeping all of my constituency safe and protected. I have the utmost respect for all of these first responders as well as all the fine women and men who serve in our Army, Navy and Air Force putting it all on the line for us. Lesser Slave Lake is also home to 11 First Nation bands. Big Stone Cree Nation, Drift Pile First Nation, Capuino First Nation, Loon River Cree Nation, Lubicon Lake Indian Nation, Peerless Trout First Nation, Saw Ridge First Nation, Sucker Creek Cree First Nation, Swan River First Nation, Whitefoot Lake First Nation, and Woodland Cree First Nation. The riding was proudly represented by Pearl Callahasen for more than a quarter century. Ms. Callahasen was a trailblazer as the first Métis woman to hold public office in Alberta, and her contributions to our riding and province are tremendous. There are three Métis settlements in my riding, Gift Lake, East Prairie, and the Peavine Métis Settlement, whose chairman, Ken Nowski, has already had positive discussions with me. I look forward to using my time in office to build strong relationships with First Nations people in our riding, like Chief Silas Yellowney and Big Stone, uh, of Big Stone and Grand Chief of Treaty 8, Arthur Nowski, who I'm proud to call friends. The truth is, I owe a great deal to Lesser Slave Lake, as my relationship with the riding goes back decades. My grandfather, Leonard Rain, immigrated to this great province in 1910 and started sawmilling shortly thereafter. He homesteaded a quarter section about an hour west of Edmonton by Wildwood. He and his wife, Lena, had ten children, seven girls and three boys. My grandparents' three sons, Harold, Jim and my father, Pat, all became sawmillers like their father. Three of my aunties, Helen, Karn and, Wendy, and Winnie, started a band called the Rain Sisters Trio and they played for years at many country dances all over northern Alberta. Mr. Speaker, at this point, 
I think it's only fair to warn you that music and singing does run in my family. So you could have some serious competition at this year's yodeling slash karaoke singing extravaganza. <laughs> later, later. <clears throat> my father and mother, Pat and Helen Raines, raised seven children in Wildwood, Alberta. I should clarify that because we really had a gypsy type of lifestyle being in the sawmilling business back then. Alberta Forest Service would auction off stands of timber and sawmillers would bid on them. And if successful, they would move their sawmill close to that stand of timber and saw it and then move on to the next stand of timber. We moved our sawmill all over sawing timber, Wildwood, Edson, Cynthia, Whitecourt, Gruard, Chickadee Creek, Simonette Road off of Highway 43, Fort Assiniboy, and many other places. Right after I was born in Edmonton, my mom whisked me off with her to our sawmill bush camp up by Fox Creek, right by the Little Smoky River. And yes, when I needed some water, they filled my baby bottle right from the Little Smoky River. I'm not sure if Alberta Health Services would approve of that today, but I was a bush baby and I survived to tell the story. After finishing high school, I received a volleyball scholarship and attended Red Deer College and then the University of Alberta. I achieved an edu education degree specializing in business and physical education. I come from a very humble background. When I graduated, all that I had was a big student loan, a desire to work hard, and to try my very best. I taught Catholic high school for a couple years. While I loved teaching, eventually I decided to go back sawmilling and to the forest where my heart yearned to be. So I put every penny I had together and I purchased a timber quota in that scenario. 21 years ago, I purchased a sawmill in Wabasca called Wabasca Lake Sawmills. Shortly thereafter, I purchased another sawmill in timber quota in Grand Cache area, where I sawed for nearly 20 years. 16 years ago, I started purchasing quarter sections of timberland in the Lesser Slave Lake riding, close to High Prairie, Sunset House, Triangle, and Jussard. I still own some of this land today, along with four timber quotas. 11 years ago, I started my own crane company, which experienced amazing growth until the NDP came to power in Alberta in 2015. Many of my competitors tried to hang on, but the economic catastrophe was too great and many companies went bankrupt or had to auction off everything. Great companies like Adam Crane, who had been in business for over 40 years. I was faced with some very tough decisions and I decided that I needed to expand into the United States in order to survive. I did expand into the USA in 2017. Today I own one of the largest single person owned fleet of cranes in North America, with cranes in operation across Canada and the United States. I would like to thank our great neighbors, the United States of America, for allowing companies such as mine to come and compete in their great free market system. For the better part of my life, I have been working to create jobs and make life better for others. I've employed hundreds of Albertans, helping them find meaningful work and start their own families and companies. Some people would call me an overachiever. I say I'm a very blessed individual who has an incredible work ethic and was fortunate enough to be born in the greatest province in the greatest country in the world. Yeah. Honestly, where else but Alberta would my amazing life have been possible? I know the Alberta Vantage because I've lived it. Now I want to ensure that it's alive and well for generations to come. I want to ensure that if a young person wants to start a company, that they can right in Lesser Slave Lake if they wish to do so. Just like what was done, like the Buchanans, Vanderwells, Ogiers, Badgers, Williscroft, Lukens, and many, many others in our great constituency. Mr. Speaker, I didn't pursue this job out of self-interest. I don't need a job. I don't want the cushy, cushy perks. <clears throat> and I don't, I'm not interested in any fancy parties. I pursued this job because I know what it's going to take to make life better for families and businesses in our riding, province and country, and I'm ready to get to work. The people of my riding are some of the kindest, friendliest, and most optimistic people you will ever meet but the past four years have been very difficult on them. We saw the introduction of the NDP carbon tax, the largest tax increase in Alberta history, in the middle of an economic recession. 
We saw mass layoffs, business closures, and investment flight. And we saw four major pipelines get canceled and delayed indefinitely. I have sat in this legislature and I heard members of the opposition trying to legitimize their horrific deficit accumulation while in government, often blaming it on the oil price collapse for the entire four-year period they were in power. Mr. Speaker, I have a news flash. The oil price recovered years ago. It's the price differential that is killing us. This price differential is caused by lack of pipelines, which was caused by terrible decisions by the NDP, not standing up for Albertans and Canadians to get pipelines built. The policies of the past four years haven't worked, and I stand here strongly aware that Albertans elected our government to deliver bold, conservative change. The UCP has a, has a strong plan to get Albertans working again, and it's already been put into action. We've passed several policies that will make life better for families and businesses, including repeal the carbon tax, implementing job creation tax cut, and cutting red tape to give entrepreneurs the freedom they need to invest, grow, and hire right here in Alberta. We will be bringing in the groundbreaking Aboriginal Opportunities Corporation, which will facilitate First Nations financial participation in major resource projects, including pipelines. And we will stand up to Ottawa any time they try to pass legislation that hurts our province, like Bill C-48, the West Coast Tanker Ban, and Bill C-69, the No More Pipelines Bill. I'm fiercely proud and I'm glad to be part of the governing party of Alberta, and we will never apologize for that. We aren't anyone's embarrassing cousin. Three years ago, I listened as our Premier lay out a clear vision to get Alberta back on track, and I decided to get involved. I took time away from my crane company to help his campaign to unite Conservatives. Our Premier and our government represent a fresh start for Lesser Slave Lake and Alberta, and I couldn't be happier to be here with them today. We're going to deliver on our commitments and make Alberta once again a beacon of hope and opportunity for people from all over Canada and the world. In summary, I'd like to quote Dean Alfange. I do, not chose to, I do not choose to be a common man. It is my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dulled by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to, be, to barter incentive for a dole. I prefer the challenge of life to the guaranteed existence the thrill of fulfillment to the state of Commutopia. I will not trade freedom for beneficence, nor my dignity for a handout. I will never cower before any master, nor bend to any threat. It is my duty to stand erect, proud, and unafraid, to think and act for myself, enjoy the benefit of my creations, and to face the world and boldly say, this I have done. Thank you.